Hey guys, my name is Dr. Baron Bell. I am a professor of art and design at Liberty University, and I am a published comic book artist. And welcome to Concept Art for Comics. This is your one-stop shop for behind the scenes of comic book art and design. So let's get into it. So today, I uh, wanted to go over briefly um, the process of how I created this image. This is actually a character from Dominion. Uh, she is a princess. She's also a warrior. So I guess you can say she's a warrior princess. Her name is Michael. She's actually the daughter of the king in the story, King Saul. And as you can see, they are anthropomorphic lions. And she has a really cool mech. Her mech armor is really going to help her uh, fight bad guys, right some wrongs. And uh, oh, by the way, uh, she is a character from my book, Dominion, Fall of the House of Saul, which is now available on Indiegogo uh, Chapter 2. Uh, basically, the, the story is, uh, I would say, Star Wars meets Narnia. It's uh, like a sci-fi space opera inspired by uh, the book of 1 Samuel in the Bible. And by the way, guys, if you've never read uh, the book of First Samuel in the Bible, it's kind of like, uh, how can I explain it? It's almost kind of like Game of Thrones in a way. Um, but I elevated to space with um, mechs and fighters and lasers and all sorts of sci-fi goodness. Uh, when I usually begin um, sketching, uh, I use a blue uh, kind of a sketch pen. Now I'm working in Procreate uh, and uh, which is really, really cool. It's on the Apple iPad and uh, I like it because when I use the Apple pen, um, it really with in conjunction with uh, the uh, Procreate program and uh, a really cool kind of a surface um, uh, rough textured screen protector screen protector. Uh, it really does give you a simulation of, of paper. Um, and so, you know, I'm old school. So back in the day, we used to work on Bristol board with non-photo blue pencils to kind of uh, give you a good sense of control. And then you can uh, uh, scan it or you can photocopy it. And, uh, it you know, the, the rough line work would not show up underneath the pens, the, the inks that you put on. So for this image, uh, you know, I, I, I work really rough. I work really sketchy. And, uh, you know, I actually create multiple layers for my pencils so that I can have that flexibility to play around with, um, you know, my line work. And so uh, I've drawn her many, many times. And of course, I use a reference image, as you can see up front uh, for the, the mech model, as well as um, the princess and how she looks, it really is important to have reference so that you can keep things consistent, especially in comics. You're going to be drawing something over and over again. You want to make sure that you draw it right. Uh, and so that things look consistent from page to page and from book to book. And so, you know, I keep my reference images in a, in a library and, uh, you know, I pull them out when I need to. And so in this image, I wanted her to look like, OK, she's uh, attached to this mech um, through this like a neural link. And you can see that on her her eye. It's just the uh, uh, neural interface. And so when she moves, the mech moves. So she's putting her hands like she's cracking her knuckles. And so uh, the mech arms move as well, uh, like she's cracking her knuckles. And so uh, it just really makes makes for a very, very um, easy, ease of use uh, interface. And so uh, as you see, I've drawn uh, a rough under layer and then I, I do another layer where I clean it up and st still I'm all still just doing pencils right now. So the thing I love about Procreate is that you can use uh, multiple layers uh, just like in Photoshop to do all sorts of things. And so me, because I'm messy and I, I mess up a lot, 
uh, I want to make sure that, okay, uh, this is, you know, nice and the lines are straight and clean and crisp and this is the pose that I want. And so, you know, I have to do that for the mech. Plus, I also have to do that for the uh, for the for the princess as well. And so it's it's just me taking the time to just go through and uh, go through a rough process, but also to go through a um, a cleanup process in my uh, my pencil uh, sketch work. Uh, I really like the blue because you know I, it doesn't have to be blue. You can use whatever color you want. If you want to just do just black. If you even want to just go straight to inks, that's fine too. But it, it just really depends on how clean you work. Um, me, I'm messy. So I have to really just take time to be messy and go back and clean up. Um, another cool thing about Procreate is, you know, uh, you can easily make straight lines just by um, when you draw your initial line you hold at the end and then it becomes a straight line or if you do a wobbly curve if you hold and press and hold at the end uh it you know it becomes a, a vector where you can manipulate the curve so those are things that um you know have really been, been a game changer for me as a comic book artist uh, especially as a penciler which is my specialty um but it has also enabled me to actually do things that I want I wasn't so strong at which is inking so as I'm inking uh you know procreate brushes are awesome um I use a studio pen and uh I just go in and the cool thing about the apple pencil and the ipad is that you know you uh, you are able to simulate um pressure sensitivity and so you can get a, a nice um variety in your line weight and uh it, it just feels really professional it feels really um uh, clean uh and that's one of the things i always kind of harp on with my students in, in in these classes that i teach is you got to make your stuff clean man you, you gotta you gotta make it look finished um and, and you know that's why you go through the process of doing a pencil sketch that's really initially really sketchy and messy and then you slowly but surely refine 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 and over time uh you you as you practice things will become a lot um, more uh, a lot easier um, one thing i forgot to mention is that um i had a symmetry um uh, on when i was doing my um the, the initial construction, pencil construction of the mech. Um, it's a feature in Procreate where uh, you select it and then what, what you draw on one side automatically appears on the other side. And so kind of <laughs> makes my job a lot easier because I'm not having to draw the whole thing at once. Now I can just draw one side of it. And uh, you know, really you're doing both sides at the same time. It really does help with, um, with symmetry and with making sure everything look, looks nice and straight. Um, also, another thing, please guys, use visual reference. Um, I am a Pinterest fanatic. Um, listen, anything you wanna draw, you can find on Pinterest. So I go to mechs and look at what other people have done, not to copy, but to emulate. And uh, just to, you know, maybe even I'm not, maybe I'm not even looking at a mech. Maybe I'm looking at uh, aircraft design. Maybe I'm looking at car design. Maybe I'm looking at concept images of future cars to just really kind of get that look and feel of that mech and those gears and the hydraulics and, and all of the stuff that you will see in complex machinery um, so that I can make this look and feel like a machine. Um, once I've done that and got my inks done and everything is nice and clean, the color is also not it, not my strongest suit. But, you know, um, I am able to, with Procreate, really take advantage of how fast it is and the, the array of brushes that you can use. Um, I just use a standard flat brush uh, to go in and I have um, several layers that I use. Um, initially, I'm just kind of painting on top of 
uh, a, 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 a flat layer where I can just um, put all of the color initially as just flat color and then I go in and I, I do all of my embellishments uh, and, and also you have to determine and this is huge guys what direction is the light coming from you need to know where that sun is located or where is that artificial light coming from and then you simulate that um, you have to know where the light is hitting where the shadow is falling and that's really another thing you do um, and so with me um, okay so the light is coming from the left side of the screen and it's going to the right side uh, and then so the light parts on the left and the dark parts are on the right and so then you go in and you add all of your highlights and different variations of color, add your texture. Everything can kind of interact with each other. There are many different levels of light that you want to deal with. You deal with highlights, you deal with your, your mid-tone lights, you deal with the shadows. Uh, and if you're thinking in terms of three dimensions, you have to think in terms of, okay, where does light fall on a sphere? Where does light fall on a cube? Where does light fall on a rectangular shape? Where does light fall on organic shapes? So all of those things you have to think about. And if you need to have some type of model that you stand up uh, and have that um, use, maybe put a, 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 if you have like a desk lamp, Put that on a model and then that can help you determine okay this is how you light a human being do whatever you got to do one other thing that i have to you have to consider and one thing i love is color theory and so i'm like okay i want this thing to pop and so um, if i know that uh, uh, the complementary color of red is green or on that spectrum uh, i want to have those complementary colors play in 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 this in this image and so you have a lot of warm colors out, out on the outside and then you have this pop of blue which is this kind of a cool color on the inside of this thing and it gives you a a, a really a really nice focal point uh, as you're going in and just kind of filling in all those other little elements and the detail work and all that then you really get a good sense of a really nice solid uh, a piece of concept artwork um, as you can see, you know, I make a lot of decisions and then I, I unmake the decisions and then I say, okay, well, I think it's finally done. Um, the thing about it, guys, is with art, you have to figure out when are you finished uh, and you can't be a perfectionist about it because as I tell my students all the time, perfectionists never meet deadlines. Um, lastly, I just want to just show you um, uh, my, my Procreate process. Um, because what I do is, like I said, you know, you saw me, um, I was making all of my layers, uh, and you want to make sure you, you label all of your layers. Um, and so as you look, just basically from a blank slate, you see all of my, my, uh, layers are labeled. It really does help when you are trying to maintain a clean workflow. And so you can go through, you can see my pencils. Some of them's been erased. Then you can see the inks that they were put together. And then you can just start adding the other layer on top of it. And then we have our accent color. Uh, and we have the background color and you have the texture layer and then you have the highlight layer which if you look very closely you can actually see um, that uh, yeah the, the highlights are extremely extremely important now I could go in and put highlights on everything I put highlights on my little line work here um, those are also important little things that you want to do to make sure that, you know, hey, listen, the devils in the details, you know, could this be a lot cleaner? Absolutely. Do I have the time to make it cleaner? Not really. Uh, I can make the time if I need to, but I wanted to get this out. So guys, thank you so much for uh, just taking some time to listen. Uh, periodically, I will post uh, videos for uh, just 
just breakdowns, explanations of all sorts of different things. As you know, I'm, you know, I'm a college professor, but I'm also a published comic book artist and I'm always working. So, you know, you guys will be a part of the process of me working. Sometimes I'll show you a page I'm working on. Sometimes I'll just show you some art that I'm playing around with or whatever. If you ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at uh, uh, contact at terminusmedia.com. That's contact at terminusmedia.com. Go to our website, www.terminusmedia.com and see the latest things that we're working on. Right now it's uh, Dominion Chapter 2, but we also have other books as well. Um, the uh, Indiegogo is up for Chapter 2 right now, um, and Digital is out in time for Christmas. In a nutshell, Dominion is Star Wars meets Narnia. <laughs> really, it's just, it's basically like that. It's a lot of animal characters flying around the spaceships, fighting the mechs, and uh, just stuff uh, battling this really, uh, uh, really big battle, galactic battle. Please do me a favor and support indie comics. If not mine, go on Indiegogo or Kickstarter and just find someone to support. There's a lot of great stories out there right now, and it's a good time to do it. Um, also, please like and subscribe if this really helps you because I want to grow this channel and uh, I love to teach art and comics and it's just a really good way for me to kind of connect the dots between the thing that I teach and the thing that I love to do all the time, which is comics. Um, lastly, uh, I talk about Procreate a lot. I am not being paid by Procreate. I wish I would, but uh, would be, but uh, it, it's a really great uh, software and it's cheap. So go on um, the uh, iTunes uh, web store and buy it. I think it's like 10 bucks, I believe. So any way to enhance your artistic talent and your skills by using really cool tools is definitely something that's right up your alley. So thanks guys for listening, for watching today. I am Dr. Baron Bell, and this was Concept Art for Comics.